Coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show 812, Richard's here and we've got lots to talk about. I'm back and uh, we're just talking about Raspberry Pi and Windows 11 and other stuff with uh, Raspberry Pi as well. And I think Rich is pushing me in to get something new, so we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the latest build of Windows 11, which we've been playing around with. And there's uh, some uh, speculation that I've got on what they're going to do with the rollouts of Windows 10 and Windows 11 this year. We'll be talking good with Festival Speed and some of the stuff that Rich did saw there and lots more. So let's get straight over to Rich. Richard, good evening. Good evening. Hey, it's good to be back. Yeah, back in the shed. Yay. <laughs> and you're back online. Hooray. Back. Yeah, I'm back online. You're back in your shed. Uh, how long are you isolating for? Another 10 day one, is it? Uh, it yeah, the 10 day the ten day thing kicked off today, unfortunately. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately, um, uh, I think the, uh, the, kid, the kid's class got sent home after some exposure. And that means we're now, well, obviously, we've got to stay at home for 10 days. So, yeah, all fun and games. <laughs> yeah. Could be done. Fantastic. Got to be done. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah so I did I did uh, 10 days as well. It was, uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Like, uh, um, I kind of locked him in my little office. with, And when there's a lot of synthesizers in there, I can just spend, <laughs> I, I can lose many an hour in here. That's no problem. Brilliant. <laughs> it's a bit harder with younger children, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And obviously, it's yeah, it's, it's her who's isolating, but uh, but you know, but we have yeah. to. Yeah, we should really stay in the house, and she's she can't leave the house for a week for, for ten days. Yeah, yeah, it's um, uh, yeah, you have to keep finding different things to uh, keep her occupied. Yeah, uh, Lego has done very well out of me today. I have to tell you. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, uh, we've got plenty of things we can talk about. Uh, uh, this week we've got new builds. We've got uh, you had a bit of a trip out. We can talk about that. I want to still uh, mention the computer museums we had our trip to and Raspberry Pi stuff, which you talked about last week. But I've been playing with that some more. Uh, but first of all, uh, okay, what a brilliant uh, couple of days we had in Cambridge and Milton Keynes at the computer museums a couple of weekends ago. Um, it, they were so. Uh, so uh, hospitable towards us and, and as you mentioned on the show last week there was no special treatment so we didn't get behind the scenes or covid secure you know everybody chucked out type of tour we were just paying punters like you would be if you went and and it was fantastic that's right exactly yeah it was it, it was basically a huge experience and, and you know apart from a few small changes i would say the experience wasn't changed at all from the before times yeah yeah it was fantastic and i've posted Quite a lot of videos, um, some short ones and some long ones as well. So the uh, museum in Cambridge, um, there's some longer videos of that with one on gaming, one on home micros, one on the office type stuff. And uh, there's some shorter montage and type videos that I did, including our little chat from the car park as well. <laughs> And uh, I also had a, a, a little video as well from the National Museum of Computing as well, including a chat with them and us at the, at the place as well. So it was really a fantastic. And uh, uh, I came, came away pleased to know that our uh, heritage is in good hands. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can't recommend them enough. If you've got even a passing interest, even if you've got no interest at all in, 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 this, in this sort of thing, I think anyone would, would, would find it very engaging really engaging yeah. so it's, it's it's not just for you know the the nerds like <laughs> like ourselves i think anyone uh, who's got you know will will we'll, we'll find this big, the, the content really engaging and a really worthwhile you know investor of a few of a few few, 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 few hours of a day yeah absolutely and i have to say some of those um old machines i was really enamored with the, with some of the, the look and feel of some of those machines uh, yeah especially I, that orange terminal i did see you funneling the ql as well so oh yes as well yeah i did like the the ql and uh, I, I i've been having a look to see i was thinking one of those old terminals is you know whether i could find one that was in a dis, you know, a, dis, a state of disrepair, and bring some life back to it with a with a Raspberry Pi. But finding just it's just finding the right one. But uh, um, so I'm not sure whether uh, uh, maybe a Spectrum or uh, or something like that. But I just like that sort of that. It to me it looks sci-fi, and I think it's because uh, I'm I'm talking that that one that you were playing on. Um, oh, the orange one. Yeah. 
That's yeah, the orange one. Cool. Yeah. Because it, it it's funny, isn't it? Because even though it's a machine that's, what, 50-odd years old, I'm guessing, um, it did have that... L- 70s sci-fi look to it that uh obviously it, you know that space 1999 kind of yeah, yeah. it's or, or even well, i think you, know, you kind of put your mind as well of the um some of the more recent marvel fare like loki as well and kind of that, that kind of that kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah that's right yeah i was going to show uh, share my screen to show if this it's the one with me having eaten all the pies i'm afraid you didn't <laughs> I, I, I was going to Fame from showing that I was going to just show the, the one, but it's uh, oh, there we go. Uh, the oh, white screen. Yeah. There. there we go. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit blurry. This one, but yeah, it, it, it I, I love that sort of keyboard uh, effect and orange monitor. So, a bit um, blurry. was that was that taken with the uh, duo per chance? No, it wasn't. That was uh, <laughs> that was on the uh, note, that one. but yeah, I, the, the blue ones are not as keen on, but that white sort of. White and orange looks fantastic, but uh, really? I think um, that that was a terminal that was actually we, we didn't go into too much detail when we, we talked about it, that, but that was a terminal, wasn't it? That was, yes, it was, it was yeah. an authentic terminal, but it was connected up to a Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi was acting as the host. That's correct. Yes, the the, the switch box you can see on the right of it, the kind of base switch, switch box would switch it over to um, being a terminal for I think it was a Pi Zero. He said. Uh, or it could run from uh, that bank of uh, massive beige boxes in the background. You can see that there were five boxes. I think it, it can run from those as well. But while, while we, we were there, they were just running it from, from, from the pie, which, of course, I had no idea at all they were doing that. It was just great. And that's an amazing thing, isn't it, to show, um, actually, the, you know, the, the, to highlight that, that those big bank of machines there, we've got what, five cabinets uh, full of equipment, Actually, is doing the same thing as a Raspberry Pi Nano or Zero, <laughs> Pi Raspberry Pi Zero. And yeah. Probably <laughs> <a good> <laughs> <as well. laughs> yeah, exactly. It's amazing, isn't it? I think. Um, I think I, th- I saw it today. I think t- today is one of the anniversaries of the Cray. I can't remember. Yeah, was it uh, what year it came out? But it was today. It's on this day anyway, and it was something like, um, you know, the, the the most powerful computer of all uh, 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 of anything at the time when it came out. And it's of course now it's you know my uh, I bet my Galaxy Bud headphones has got more technology and <laughs> more processing power. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and that's what the museum's great for showing. You know, you can go in the you, you can go in the a room like this office one, and you know, look at this computer room of the 70s and really you know the decatron with its thousands of little mechanical dials and things like that and then you go into the more into the the, the uh micro computer era and then of course you go on to vr and you you, you know you've just seen all this technology yeah. just rapidly shrink down in in a relatively short period of time absolutely yeah but it is brilliant i mean again i just i uh, I've not been to the National Museum of Computing before, and I, I honestly can't recommend it enough. And also the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. Yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. Re- they were they were really uh, fascinating, and uh, like you said, any age group could go, and uh, yeah, it would. It's well worth looking at. And of course, we got to uh, to see Windows One working as well. Yes, Windows One Point Oh Three running on the RM Nimbus. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so yeah, that was a, it. Was a really good trip, and I really do recommend. Anyway, we're going to have some. Uh, we should hopefully have some from the National Museum of Computing to join us as, as well on the show to talk about you know the how you can actually get that down there. But uh, if you're in that uh, southeast area, and and the, the other thing I should say about it as well, which makes it so great, is you, you we drove in as after I found the entrance, but, um, but once you drive, you know, you park right outside. Yeah, um, yeah. So if you've got young kids or disabilities or whatever, you are literally parked outside the door and into the museum. Um, so even if you're traveling from a fair distance, you've not got to think you know, about parking in Cambridge or anything like that, or Milton Keynes or anything when you get there. You just get there and get in there. It's fantastic. Yeah, really, really well done, that actually, because it's a, yeah. certainly in Cambridge parking can be an absolute nightmare in that place. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was great to basically drive up, park up, get out, and you're done. So it's so great for accessible folks. So great for accessible because there's no there, there, there are no steps to get into in them either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they're really fully accessible, um, both inside, uh, you know, getting in there and when you're in there, fully accessible as well. And uh, they really made it um, made it 
nice and easy and an enjoyable uh, day. And, and we spent ages in at both places and, and probably could have spent that time again. Um, uh, so yeah, really enjoyed, really enjoyed those those couple of days and uh, um, very nice to, to catch up as well, which was good. Definitely. Uh, so while we were, uh, so one of the things that uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about new builds of Windows 10, but I want to talk about what we both uh, been playing with. Uh, I think perhaps inspired by that place as well. It was um, was Raspberry Pis, and uh, I know you started, and we've both been playing with Raspberry Pi. So how are you doing with Raspberry Pi and Windows 11? It's working perfectly, and I've had no problems at all. It um, it's installed the Windows 11 uh, build okay. Uh, it took the Windows 11 update, uh, the 22.000.65, uh, uh, which came out last week. It took, it took that as well, no problems at all. And it's also running the um, uh, Office, uh, the, the ARM 64 version of uh, Office. And I have to say, it's it's smooth enough that it's almost a daily driver. I mean, it's, it's a little bit sluggish here, and the edge is particularly slow. Uh, but other things seem to work really well. How about you, Ian? No, that's right. Well, and, you, and you're running this on a Pi 400. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm running on a Pi 400. Four, four, which, four which because it's it's got the it's got the highest base clock speed. I mean, obviously you, you, you can have a clock pi, so it's got the highest base clock speed. So uh, that does seem to help as well. And it's a recent, it's a, it's a, it's a very up to up to date set of firmware. Yeah. So, um, well, I've got. I, I think my biggest problem is the two gig. Raspberry Pi Four is the problem. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm amazed. You, I'm amazed you, you've got as far as you have it. I mean, I mean, the, the Pi Four Hundred is obviously four gig, and I, I couldn't imagine doing less than four. Yeah. So I, I've been played around, uh, various degrees of success. No, no, I, I haven't actually got it up and running yet. Hence some other stuff I've got on the way. But with the with the two gig of RAM and the the Pi, I had, I had a lot of problems. First of all. Um, I managed to chew up a few SD cards <laughs> and <laughs> literally physically destroy them. So it seems they're unrecoverable now. But um, 16 gig RAM, uh, SD card is no good. So I went on to a 32 gig and I actually got Windows 11 working fine. But it's for some reason, it took me a long time. First of all, I had to update the firmware of my Pi as well because it was one of the uh, original Pi 4s and it wouldn't do the USB uh, MB, master boot record. Uh, set up so that was a problem so i fixed that um and eventually where i got to with it is i could i installed windows 11 got that working fine but the base image without the um cumulative upgrades and the cumulative upgrades include the new settings the new action center and a lot of visual changes uh -huh. but what it what it would do is it kept running out of memory because the swap file it, it just kept saying the swap files corrupt and needs to be recreated so you like you, you go okay it say right, you need to restart, restart, and they would say the swap files corrupt, and it was a never-ending loop. So, it and with only having two gig physical and no swap file, Windows won't run properly, and that that turned out to be why I was getting errors on Windows Update because it was running out of RAM. Yeah, uh, and and I created uh, alternate drives, and I, part, I created a partition and moved the. Um, uh, the, the swap file to the to the extra partition. I moved it to a USB stick. I removed it moved it to an SD card, and it wouldn't do it. So I think um, the Pi Four is probably two gig of RAM is, is is no good on it. What I did do is I got a a, a USB driver, one to eight USB driver I found hanging around. It's a little USB stick you know, that uh, that I, I used as well, which actually worked quite quite good. But anyway, so I thought I'd try to tackle it another way and. Put Windows 10 on it and then upgrade that to Windows 11. And Windows 10 works fine on it actually, no mm -hmm. swap file issues at all. So I've got the, and I I really struggled to get Windows 10 to work on a Pi before. So I don't know why this time it worked first time. So Windows 10 worked fine. It would do the upgrade, but then of course uh, it it fails the validation. Uh, from I think for having two gig of RAM as well as yeah. the processor and everything else. So I I think I need to give up on the two gig of RAM. So I, 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 mean, I mean, I mean, when mine runs, it appears to be using three gigs from what I can see. And I think there are tweaks. If, if you've got, say, an eight gig pie, you can tweak it so it use more RAM. And definitely it needs, it does like its RAM, that's for sure. Yeah. So so I've got a, a 400 coming, uh, which which you've been telling me for about a week and a half to, to order. 
<laughs> well, exactly. I mean, I mean, yeah, you will thank me for it. It's it's a wonderful machine of the four hundred because it's a it's the computer in a keyboard. And since we've just been to all these retro museums where there are lots of yes. computers and keyboards, it's an actual pr- 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 progression. Yeah, and what I've ordered as well is a one two eight gig. Um, uh, what was it? NVO uh, RAM, you know SSD RAM. Oh yeah. And a little USB three adapter for it. So um, it'd be nice and fast because that's the other thing I noticed is because it's using uh, it's going to use a lot of swap file. Um, then that you know fast disk will make a difference. So I so I've got this as well. So they have, this is the fastest. This should be faster than an SD card. Mm-hmm, um, that's so I, I I imagine and that will be because I always find with Windows the faster your hard drive is the it sounds obvious but the better your experience is and that really makes more difference than processor or um, or the amount of RAM you've got just getting that fast SSD really makes a difference so I've gone what I hope for is the best the fastest up uh, way for SSD so that's my plan anyway so hopefully they'll come this week and I'll. Uh, I'll have one of those. Uh, I'll have that up and running, um, and then and then of course I can just swap out the SSD for whatever I feel like uh, other operating systems uh, when I'm ready. Because what I have been playing with and got working this week, because I thought, well, I'll give up with one thing. I'll try something else. Is Retro Pi? Have you tried that? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously that yeah, you know, with Retro Pi, that you do have the whole issues around ROMs. But yes, yes, it's a. Uh, uh, <laughs> It's 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 it, it's a very neat tool for emulating old. Um, I, mean, I use it for mainly for old old arcade for old arcade games that you can't play it anymore. But yes, it's a it, it can do an awful lot, can't it? Yeah, because you remember when we were talking about um, I've, I've got that Bluetooth Spectrum keyboard, USB Bluetooth keyboard, yeah. and I couldn't get Fuse on the Raspberry Pi to run the full screen. But of course, with Retro Pi, it will it does run full screen. Because it's the full, you know, the retro pie. If anybody's seen this, is a it's an add-on for the for the Raspberry Pi or for any there's various version of it. But there is a specific build for the Raspberry Pi that boots into it um, and presents you with a, you can scroll through different operate different platforms. So I've got ZX Spectrum. I have um, I installed DOSBox. So I've got MS DOS and I installed MSX as well, just for a laugh. So I've got MSX and <laughs> Amiga as well. So you can I can go through these. But you, you like I said, you've got to get your ROMs or your applications for in terms of Spectrums the tape files. You just dump the tape files into the right folder. And then when you fire this up, you're presented with, you know, you go to the Spectrum section and then all the games are there and you just choose which one you want or you can just go straight to single Air Basic. And it works brilliantly. Full screen, supports Kempston joystick. Um, and you, you could, I think you can even emulate things, can't you? So you could get, say, an Xbox controller and, and make it emulate a Kempston joystick or or um, you can get an, you can have it as a, as a Sega Mega Drive or a, a Nintendo whatever you know you there's, there's thousands of different platforms in there isn't it, that you can play with yeah oh yeah i mean it's, it's so much stuff in there and it's very and it's got a very very polished front front end as well it's 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 a really good tool in fact i've described it the closest thing if anybody's never used it is something like cody xbmc that kind of front <laughs> end. <laughs> yeah um yeah kind of that media front end that you would have had if you if you so if you're building a Kodi media player with with uh, Raspberry Pi where it kind of takes over the Raspberry Pi and the Linux is in the background well this is the kind of same thing but for running these emulators um I got the em- Amiga emulator installed but it kept crashing so I'm not quite sure what I've done yet so I need to 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 work out I, I didn't spend much time on that I, I made sure I got the Spectrum emulator working first but fantastic um and of course it's, it's in the background it's using Fuse and I've, I've done a lot of fiddling around with fuse in the past so that's the spectrum emulator but there's there was, and there's loads on there as i was curious i saw msx i thought oh, i wanted to i want to play an ms on an msx you can do that so yeah uh, like 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 you said and on what and what especially when i get the, the 400 with the little with the built-in keyboard i just have that on a an sd card that image and then i it's a emulator and then i take that out and put the windows um uh, Drive on there, and it's a it's a Windows 11 machine. Well, that's the idea, anyway. So. Well, yes, I mean that's one of the great things I've always liked about uh, at these pies is, is is the removable storage. So, I mean, I mean, I've got SD cards with with, with um 
uh, various amenities on them. So my Pi 400 400A can, can be at once a TI 99 and then a BBC Model B and a uh, <laughs> spectrum. But I like to have the SD cards completely separate. So uh, I get this full on experience to boot straight in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's brilliant. It works really well. That um, that's what I quite like to that retro pie is it. It's one step on top of that. So you boot into that and then just pick your your, your, your platform that you want to go into. So um, yeah, so I could have like a, a Windows 10 drive. I could have a Windows 11. I can have this uh, retro pie and just choose what I want. Sure. But what what I, what I think would be nice fun though is is to get one of these uh, old computer cases and maybe you know build that in but uh, the portability of the the form factor of that one that, that orange one that i did like is not <laughs> ideal so i don't think i would be lugging that one around with me so i think something like the the spectrum form factor or is, is, you know the wedge form factor is, is is probably the best one but um I, I, maybe that's what i'll use my two gig pi 4 for and keep the four the four gig one for uh for the, for the windows stuff but <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's been it's quite interesting been playing around with the 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 uh, because it's not when i would say windows isn't you know before people ask windows isn't supported on the raspberry pi microsoft don't provide you any tools for this this is all through the communities various communities and i would say that just google it because or or bing it if you want but there's there's lots of guides on how to do this and um none of it's illegal software you're not not downloading hacked Code or well, compromise you know, code. I don't think I mean, there is the issue, isn't there, of the of, of where you get the Windows and because it, it does you need a Windows inside of ISO. So I think yeah. you probably need to be on the inside of program. And of course, I don't know if you encountered this, but um, in order to make Windows behave once it's installed, you do have to activate it. At least that's what I found. And and and, and, and yeah, I, and, and I had an, an annotation code, and then I was able to join it to the inside of program and make it do all its stuff, but. Um, I think in all these cases, the issue of the Windows license itself is perhaps a problematic part. I'm afraid I, I don't know enough on that. Yeah. What I would say is you, you don't want to download from unknown sources where no. there, there are a few tools out there that help you get these things directly from Microsoft. Um, so yeah. that's, you know, that, but uh, I, I, yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't be putting any production machines or, you know, you should, shouldn't be, certainly something you shouldn't be paying money for any of these. Oh. No, I mean, it's it's very much just a, a because you can as opposed to yeah exactly. <laughs> it's particularly useful it, it does work well i have to say uh and and i'm gonna i'll give immense credit to the community who built the drivers and, and, and made this work because you do obviously realize when when you're running it windows 11 and i suppose 10 to uh does run in test mode which means of course drivers aren't signed by, by microsoft so it is completely unsupported uh and uh you know, again if you have problems then on your own head, be it. Uh, you certainly should, shouldn't be using it. This whole order thing for any production workloads. And as we know, in theory, come October time, I think it's going to be October when Windows 11 comes out, Microsoft will stop this working. Yeah, yeah. But it's certainly good fun to to um, to do. And it, it always, um, it, uh, and when it, for me, when something doesn't work is when I really enjoy it because that's when you get the challenge and that's where I spent. Um, home alone a few evenings last week i've spent a, a lot of time fiddling around with this because because i had the time and the inclination and i think if it had worked first time i would have been a bit disappointed so i'm and, glad uh, it's, I, I, and, and i say hurrah for tinkerers yes definitely yeah that's i mean that's that's what got me into this thing anyway tinkering with zx81 programs that didn't work and trying to fix them so that's that's where i started <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm still blaming Gary for some of those codes that I have to type in. I'm, sh- I'm sure I typed in the game listing of one of his magazines. That, that <laughs> he says he, he says it's my typing. I say it's his listing, but, but, but I, I, not, I don't think we've been... that's how I learned the code too. Trying to debug those magazine listings because there must be some critical line that was missing or hadn't been printed on the page. Yeah, I remember those very yeah. very well. And there was the funny thing. There was always the the month the month after, wasn't it? it was the, the the apology and the corrections. <laughs> Which I was too late. <laughs> yeah, I spent four weeks trying to get this to work. Uh, yeah, and and then of course I I spent ages working, and I'd say to my mum, Dad, look at this that I've got working, and they're, they're, you know totally unimpressed. <laughs> 
which is a bit like now, really, when I when I get anything working with a pie or something like that. I say, look at this. <laughs> get the same <laughs> look. Well, retro pie will be a whole new world of drinking for you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, I think now now I'm I'm. I was looking at whether I could three D print a case. I know someone with three D printer, so I was thinking. I, actually, there are some nice little case, Raspberry Pi cases that are three D printed, but they're kind of miniature replicas. So you can get like a Commodore sixty four or a Spectrum or yeah. an Atari, but they're a little miniature ones. But I don't want the miniature ones. I want it to look uh, like uh, a size one. Well, you, you, you can normally buy dead uh, dead gear from from eBay. You know, to where, where, where it's sold, it's not working, it strictly guts out. But. Uh, um, I mean, I mean, I did always look at trying to see if, if it could make a Pi work inside a TI-99 console, but the problem was I didn't have any that I could sacrifice. Yeah, and the, and it's the keyboard scanning is the hard thing. You've got to use an Arduino to read oh, it and everything else. Yeah. I think, I think what I'm going to do, I've got, yeah. I've got this Bluetooth one. So the keyboard, and, and this is, is handled. I'm, I'm imagine, I think there's probably some space in this where I could put a, a Pi inside there, but it's a bit tight. But what I was thinking of is getting an old broken microdrive, which is all of them. Um, <laughs> and put those high in the You'll get letters for that. <laughs> well, mine, my, mine's over there. I, it does work, actually, every now and then. I haven't fired it up for a year or so. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure it does. The, Q, the, QL, uh, the QL one, I did actually get working in the end. So my QL is working at the moment, but I have no monitor to, to, to put it on. Um mm-hmm. And when we had the guest on the show explain how to do that, but it was quite complicated. So I need to, it's <laughs> another, another, another rabbit hole to go down. I think that one. <laughs> but anyway, it's good fun. So, um, yeah, so thanks Richard. You uh, pushed me into, uh, I, w- I was quite happy to just to play with my two gig one. And now you've made me get exactly. four gig one with the keyboard and a an 128 gig SSD. There we go. But you'll be much happier with that. Much happier. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I will. And then I'll be showing people and they'll all have that same look at, look at me. But if it works, you know, look at the you know the price. I think you, you want 60 something quid for the Pi 400. I think the drive was 32 quid or something, and five quid for the adapter cable. So, yeah. less less than 100 quid, you're getting a potential, you know, Windows computer. Until October. Yeah, until October. But then um, then I put Windows 10 on it because I know that works. <laughs> <laughs> but then there'll be something else to hack about and play about with one, I'm sure. I guess so. I've got to say, if, you, if you're in the market for a Pi 400, I'd also um, definitely go more for the the, you know, the full kit that comes with like the, 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 the computer, the keyboard, but also a mouse and a power supply and that all-important video cable as well because they're all, all extra things, which... Do 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 yes. do mount up and and you also if you're new to it they come with a really good book as well. Yeah, funny that too. We were talking about books when we were at the museum. Talking about the manuals that came with them. The, yeah. uh, that was that was uh, yeah that's always useful. That little key, that little cable is, is quite important. I mean, I've already got one, but it's the what micro HDMI to HDMI. Right, you yeah. do need one of them with it with with the with the new pies because they don't have the full size one. And they're missing the audio port actually, which is a bit of a shame as well. Yeah, that, yeah, that's 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 really shame, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a, a real omission on, on, on my part. I mean, the, the, the justification give, given was that while it plugs in the TV now, it's, you know, you, it's designed to be, you know, if, if you need audio, you plug headphones into your TV. But I, uh, I mean, it seemed to be a, a bit of a miss. Or you use a USB uh, headset. Um, but yeah, you know, it seemed to be a shame, really. But uh, yes, it means you know, so can use Bluetooth headphones. The, yeah. Would the um, USB C headphone adapters that you get for phones work i guess and it should do i guess so i mean um uh it's, it's, it's got full just look at the back of, the back of my own here actually so yeah so you've got the, oh it's not got usb c has it it's got your full size usb and usb uh, three so usb c wouldn't work yeah you need it gets, it gets power power through. Through back to full size one yeah it gets its power through a usb c c plug but um yeah i, I don't think you can necessarily yeah, so, so plug into, into that so you would need to plug them into the, uh, the USB A sized things, or I think Bluetooth works as well. I think. Yeah, yeah, Bluetooth does. Yeah, I'll have to have a play around with that. Depends what I do with it next. <laughs> <laughs> um, now talking of Windows uh, 11, uh, we got a new build last week, two 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 zero 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 dot six five, and confirming something I kind of guessed, but uh, 
a nice little update, but a cumulative upgrade and not a full build. Yes, so it just went blip, it came down really fast, didn't it? Yeah, and I suspect, and I've had no confirmation on this, but this is my theory, is that 222000 is the finished build of Windows 11. Okay, so expecting that, and it's, it's, that, that number, that, that minor number to keep, to keep her, her counting up. Yes. Yeah, that's right, because they've decoupled a lot of the user interface stuff from the core build now, so they don't have to keep delivering it through um, a full build now. And we'll have the 20, I think we'll get, this is, again, all speculation. I have no, no inside knowledge on this. I think we'll get 21H2 for Windows 10. Yeah. Uh, and which will be the whatever the last build was for Windows 10 that we got on the fast ring or dev, dev channel. And I think for and we'll have 21 H2 for Windows 11 being 22200 dot something. You know, we're on 65 now, so maybe like into the 200s by then. And that will be our build. That will be our um, second half build for, for this year. So we'll get Windows 10 one and the, and the Windows 11. Because that's not going to confuse anybody. <laughs> yeah, because I think they've tested all the the the, win, the twenty what we were testing before tw as a Windows inside on the Dev Channel is twenty one H two. My theory is anyway, and uh, I think that's what we'll get. So I think we'll get in October. So maybe it'll be the Windows ten October twenty twenty one update, and at the same time we'll get Windows eleven launched. Um, I suspect for a while we're going to get. Uh, at least a yearly update of Windows 10, even if it's incremental. You know, it might not be full build, but I, I, yeah, we've got, we've, got to, we've got to 25, haven't we, for support? Yeah, it's going to be interesting because um, I mean, presumably that's going to. Be, uh, I mean, are they going to keep adding new features to, to Windows 10? Or when it, it's, it's it feels like it's almost the first time they're going to have two versions of Windows running in parallel, and both getting new features. I mean, in the past we obviously had service packs and things, but. Mm -hmm. Are they going to keep adding new features to Windows 10, or or it's now just going to go to straightforward service pack pack mode after 21H2? Because that because there, there are new things that are in the fast stream or were in the fast stream, which presumably are going to make their way through at some point or not. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but presumably after 21H2 of Windows 10, do you think they're, they're going to go for just a straightforward servicing cycle, and it's just going to always be it'll be like yeah. you know Windows 7 was to Windows 8, except obviously Windows 7 lasted a lot, lot, lot longer. Yeah, I think so. A bit, bit like we do now with the uh, on, on a patch Tuesday, you'll get updates for 21H1, but you'll also get updates for 20H1, uh, 20H2 and so on. So, yeah, I think they'll get those um, those updates. So, so there'll be patch, there'll be fixes and security updates. And I'm guessing that 21H2 uh, will be the last feature update. But that's not to say they won't they won't do it, but they, that's that's probably how they do that that probably it i would have thought and then yeah uh, it depends on how, how enterprise is going I mean, if enterprise is sticking on windows 10 then they might have to to look at that but i think that's going to be the challenge with windows 11 consumers will be fine you'll get a new pc it comes with windows 11 or if you've got an hgm or a recent spec machine you'll get offered the upgrade but i think getting enterprises to switch to 11 is going to be the challenge even though it's not under the hood type lots of core changes it's the ui changes and the education that goes uh, yeah with that. yeah for sure i mean i think as far as enterprise are, are concerned it will be the next upgrade wave I mean, I, I mean i've spoken to some uh vendors like dell and, and yeah they're they're thinking it, it the upgrade wave will probably happen at some point in 2022 because uh obviously that they've that, that, that they've had the the um the wave of windows 7 to windows 10 uh they've had the pandemic wave and now They've got the Windows 11 wave coming. So it's almost like every couple of years they've been given a <laughs> another another lump of cash from people having to upgrade. So that that looks like when enterprises may well press the button to start the upgrade process once Windows Windows 11 has, has stabilised. So perhaps 2022, as anyway, you say, consumers will start getting machines from October onwards. I suppose with it preloaded. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I don't think you'll get the old downgrade rights type of stuff that you used to get with Windows 8 when you could downgrade to Windows 7. I don't, that's not going to be a thing, is it? I don't think it'll just be this is when it comes to Windows 11. And that's that's it. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, 
the, I, I do kind of miss the the grand experiment of, of Windows as a service, where where they were just going to have Windows 10 being updated forevermore. I think that that would have been nice, really, to to to, to have that one consistent experience just keeps updating, updating. But instead, they appear to to to, to have decided they're going to draw a line under under Windows 10 and create Windows 11. I mean, I'm not I'm not really clear why they couldn't simply have called Windows what is Windows 11. I mean, it's still Windows 10 under the hood, as I understand it. So obviously, it's an enhanced version, but I'm not sure why that couldn't have been the next version of Windows 10. I really don't understand why it's gone the way it has. Well, it's, it's uh, I suppose at some point, they, they draw a line under it for security and updates and, and everything else. But I think primarily it's marketing, isn't it? You've got to, you, I think as a marketing department, Microsoft's marketing and the, and the OEMs, they want something to sell and, and, and brand mm -hmm. and um, and and trying to sell Windows, the the new Windows 10 or whatever they would call it, Windows 10 20, 21 or something, is just a harder sell than it is saying, look, we've got a brand new OS. Um, so I can I can see exactly why they why they've done it. I mean, it just gives them a lot of opportunity, marketing opportunities and things to build some. Um, build, build a bit of enthusiasm and I mean just just things like you know. Um, if I wanted to do how-to videos, you know, I've I've done every how-to video that for Windows 10 that I can possibly think of, and run out. And but now I can redo them all with Windows 11. So it's a kind of it's a rejuvenation of the PC market a little bit as well. Um, and, and we know, you know, as as insiders or enthusiasts, we know under the hood it's it's essentially the same thing with the new UI, but. The, as we said before, the UI is what people see. They don't. They don't get um, to get to see the under the hood stuff. That you, you work at Microsoft on some of this clever plumbing stuff, which is amazing and probably where all the real work is. But then when you know somebody puts a rounded corner on a button, it's like, oh look at that! So we've got nothing new. But it's just the way we are, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to check actually. Well, I'll check in a sec. Whether we've got a new version number. You know, when, when you go into, into a command prompt and do a, a ver, is it still the same version? Uh, but I shall tell you because I'll check that in a minute. Um, but in terms of... Um, I'm, I'm speaking to you from my, my Mac Mini, which uh, unfortunately I don't have Windows on, so... Oh, how, how dare you. I know. Uh, Jason, Jason would be so pleased. It, yes, he would, yeah. So it comes... Uh, well, when you do ver, it gives you the build number, doesn't it? But I thought there was a way, there's a way of seeing the version that it reports back, know, isn't it? With six point. I know. I know. Is one, it WinVer? I know the first one did say ten dot twenty two hundred dot or sorry twenty two thousand dot five three at one point. That, that was a uh, because that did make that did make me smile. Yeah. Oh yeah. This um, actually, when you do WinVer, it gives you uh, version twenty one H two. There we go. Uh, Windows eleven. Yeah, so it is. But I want to, you know, that when you do, when the, it reports back, it's like version 6.2 something, isn't it? Oh, when yeah. You get the build. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I can't remember it. how you get that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll have to check that on a, on a future show. Uh, but in terms of the, the, the actual build that we got last week, nice and easy with that cumulative upgrade, which is quite nice. But um, a few little bits and pieces. It was on it, so <laughs> it, was, it was quite small. Yeah, you got the search box. Um, Search box. Yeah. Well, you've now got search box in the start menu. Yeah, but is that doing anything new? I think basics just put the search box there, and when you just type in, type in, it just flips to, a, to the ordinary search panels, as, as, as I understand it. And um, apart from that, there's, there's not a huge amount. There's some battery stuff. No. They uh, that they reckon they fixed the um, the the print nightmare um, exploit in, in this version of Windows, as they had to everywhere else. Um, it's taskbar thing. Yeah, but it's, does it work with zebra printers? I, well, I'm not even going to go down the path because it's, <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, um, yeah, it's it's not been a, they've not covered themselves in glory with this particular one. Unfortunately, I mean, you do have to feel bad for Microsoft because obviously it was accidentally disclosed early before, before they're, they're going to fix that. But it just looks like it's another fix and you just know we're going to get another fix to fix to fix that's going to come out at some point. And, oh, dear. I know it just all feels a bit a bit not properly tested. But there we go. It's one of those things. And yeah. uh, just as a reminder, if you are using a uh, domain controller that prints, using a principal service, and you've not done the patching and the um, changes that Microsoft have recommended, probably best to turn off that spooler service quite quickly. Yeah, I did notice that was one of them. It turned off the print spoolers, but I just 
I did you say 300 people saying can't print and you say well Microsoft said turn the print spooler off so I turned it off <laughs> like well, yeah but I need my print now <laughs> yeah well Microsoft said <laughs> well, exactly but you know it, it'll work for local printing but I did wonder how many enterprises actually have domain controllers still using print spooler print with locally connected printers and how many have now just got network connected printers full stop yeah we, we most of the networks but um you still do i i still have some needs for them so uh, i did have a, a, a couple of effective machines but we tend not to have dim, th that role anymore so you wouldn't have a combined role you know you used to always have the combined you would have a one office server which, which was a domain controller and print server and file server but we tend not to use that sort of style anymore uh, but there are a couple of occasions where i've seen it in use and yeah it's just the mitigation which is not to use it is it's kind of hard to explain to users and then especially if you put the patch on it so, well the mitigation we've got rid of the mitigation now you can turn the spooler on but it doesn't work with zebra printers which is the one you use so uh, <laughs> another week and i'm sure you'll be fine <laughs> it's, it, it, the, the problem is when they do that is um and when i speak to colleagues in the it industry is oh microsoft messed up you know print spoolers again so you the, the the level there's a bit of distrust to windows update so when they do an emergency update most of the reaction that I, various people across different companies is well i won't install it straight away because it's going to break something and it did but then that means that people don't install the security update straight away because the they're frightened of it breaking something and you know in this case proved correctly so it means that people don't react as quickly as microsoft would like because they've not got a trust in it in the fix yep uh, anyway back to this build so yeah there was lots of little fixes and um a few little bits and pieces there was a little slight thing for um tablet or small screen users as well with the um some of the overlays with in portrait mode have been improved uh, the snap overlays and but uh, it doesn't work that well actually uh, there's the snap stuff when you're using touch in portrait mode doesn't come up um, you can't hover with with your finger so i've yet to be able to to use that so i did record a separate video I, uh, i'm not sure we talked about this before about how using windows 11 on a tablet and so far it looks good it's it's better than windows 10 was but not as good as windows 8 i don't think we'll ever get a, an os that's quite a windows os that was quite as tablet friendly as windows 8 but we, we you know they roll back from that because it and uh, I don't think we'll ever get back to that. But uh, I, I'm using it on the Surface Go, and which is unsupported because it's not doesn't meet the requirements. But that's fine for now. Are in testing. But I do like I do like using it on here. It's a, it's a, definitely a nice. Uh, it feels lighter. I think I mentioned on the show I, I've done it. Did a PC reset, and since doing that, it's flying along now. So. I'm quite happy with 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 my little Surface Go. So, let's hope some Microsoft has something fun and interesting in the an October Surface event when they when they launch Windows 11. It'd be nice to see a new form factor. Maybe a Neo running Windows 11. Yes, <laughs> a Neo. Uh, that would be a, <laughs> interesting. A Neo running Windows 11 on ARM. Yeah. That's good, yeah. So yeah, I think you said that now I don't need to buy a Windows uh, ARM device because I'm going to get the Raspberry Pi 400. Exactly, right? But, well, up until up until October, you know, it's uh, this just <laughs> you know, if you know, everything works. Apart from the only thing that that's a bit iffy, I'd say, is Edge, and that's purely because it's really slow on this. But again, it is it's basically a, a machine that's not designed to to run um, <laughs> to run Windows um, 11 on ARM. So uh, uh, that it works at all is cheap enough. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I think these these builds are working quite nicely. And if you can get that build installed on your Pi, you'll also get all these changes as well, which is pretty amazing, really. I don't know whether anybody from Microsoft has ever tinkered about running Windows 11 on a, on a Pi. Oh, I, I bet they have. I mean, I, mean, I know of a few Microsoft Aid engineers who are massive fans of the, of the Raspberry Pi. So I think unofficially there's all kinds of uh, things going on behind the scenes. It's just uh, yeah. if, 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 if one can just can, can make the business case for actually doing official drivers or for, you know, official support, which uh, I just I get a feeling probably not, but we'll see. Yeah. 
Oh. Now, we'll make sure we have time to mention you. Uh, I was very envious of you this week because you went on a press trip to a place that I've been to a few times and uh, really very envious. So where, where were you this week? Oh, yes, yes. So I got to go to the, uh, the Goodwood Festival of Speed and play with some of the toys in the Future Lab, which was, uh, it, it was the media day, but it was, um, I think it's one of the pilot events in, in the UK, which means that um, it was almost like going back to the time before the pandemic. It was very interesting. But um, yes, yes, so I um, saw a few things. It's a shame Gary isn't here because um, there were some very interesting electric cars there. Uh, obviously, you know, Goodwood Festival of Speed is a, is, is a petrol heads, you know, dream come true. There's so many wonderful, wonderful vehicles there. But in, in the future section, there, there, there was some fascinating um, electric cars or electric car concepts, which um, uh, two of which actually jumped out at, at me. Uh, one was the Trigo and one was a Microlino. I don't know if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've heard of those at all. No, I didn't, but I, I did watch some of the highlights. I saw some electric vehicles flying up the hill to climb. Oh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the racing ones are insane. No, these are more uh, aimed at consumers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I think they're both moving from concept to production next year, so... It's not bad. Yeah, so the Trigo, uh, it's, 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 it, it's, a, it's a very interesting business model for an electric car because the way it works, you, you never have the car. And I think we've talked about the idea of renting cars and things before. Uh, what you do is it's like a two-seater inline car. So it looks a bit like, remember those BMW motorbikes uh, from a few years back? Yeah. Where it was like a, an enclosure around you. It's the same here, except, except it's got four wheels. And so they're designed to tool around the city at about sort of um, – I think about 25 miles an hour and um, uh, they can lean. And then when they leave the city, uh, then the wheelbase extends. Uh, so it, or it widens. And I think it goes uh, up to about 90 kilometers an hour. It's quite cool. But the neat thing about it, obviously it, it, it's electric, is it sounds like they're going for a kind of ride sharing type model. So what happens is, the machines themselves are just parked up around the uh, around the city. You would use your you know, an app on your phone and say, "I want to ride now, please," and then one will drive itself to you, or rather, it won't drive itself to you. A person remotely will drive it to you, and then you'll get it <laughs> and you'll drive off. So it's done by remote control via you know cellular networks. I can't imagine what could go go wrong with that. Uh, and then once you've had your fun driving it around, you get out of it, and then it goes back to whoever's got to, you know it goes back to this bank of people lurking in an office somewhere abroad or Wales or wherever um, uh, who are responsible for driving. So instead of having the Uber driver in the car, the Uber driver effectively is sat in an office somewhere steering these things around when you want in them. So I thought that was quite an interesting concept, really. Yeah. Well, it uh, is, yeah. It's, um, it's a bit like when they do the drones, but <laughs> a little vehicle. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, and obviously, you know, they're, they're making pretense of saying it's autonomous or it's self-driving. It's not. There's a person actually driving it when it's coming to you. It's just uh, <laughs> that person is driving it effectively by by remote control. And I believe they also do things like um, they'll daisy chain up as well. And um, they've got a. I think it's it's not a colossal range. I think it's only about. Is it? Uh, I can't remember. I think it's about eighty kilometers or so. It's not massively far. But the theory is, again, that they, 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 they would go back and they'd get charged up um, at the end of each day. They drive back to their, their station. Or oh, they're not charged up. They swap out the battery pack. So right. it's very quick to, to, to change them out. Or, or, they, or, or they'd have vans that go around that simply plug in new power packs to, to, to these things. So, yeah, it's a, as, a, as a concept, um, I, I found it quite interesting. And I, I think they're going to be piloting them probably around Milton Keynes, I believe. So, um when you do your visit to the uh, National Museum of Computing, you can, you can have a go at one of these, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So, yes, that was cool. But the other thing that really appealed to me, and this is just because I just like classic cars, do you remember the uh, the bubble cars that had the doors that opened up in yes. front of you? Well, there's a, I think it's a Swiss company. It's a Microlino car. Was, was also done with that, and that's also about to go into in, production as well. And... Um, it's it's a wonderful little thing. It's again a it's a four wheeler, not a three wheeler, and it looks like that car, you know, the the you know the bubble cars of old. Except of course it's got a, a it's a electric two seater vehicle. It can do uh, about ninety kilometers a mile an hour, you know, maximum speed. So it's not a speed demon. It'll do about one hundred and twenty five or two hundred kilometers of range. Um, so it's really it's designed to be a city car. But the key thing about it is is you can buy one. For I think about twelve thousand euros, 
So that's relatively inexpensive in terms of electric cars. Mm. So yeah, you think at that point you think, yeah, you can probably afford to get one of those. And yeah, if you do, if if you drive mainly you know around your town and only occasionally need, need, need your big car for long journeys, then you could simply use one of these and have effectively almost free motoring. So mm. yeah, and and the best thing and, and the best thing about, about it appeals to me being a terrible driver is that you can park the things against the curb. So you don't have to, you know, so they can, they can fit in some incredibly small spaces. So, uh, but again, oh, it's only two seats. But I really yeah. like it. I was, I, I yeah. came away really impressed with it, actually. Yeah, oh, that sounds good. I think I would have been more, I think I was seeking out the, uh, the McLaren hybrid. I think that's more <laughs> my area. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, which, which is a hybrid, no, no but uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, very nice. I see. I see. I'd carry on my shoulder, on my shoulder, saying, "Richard, look at the look, look at the practical cars, not the bad cars." Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid I won't be able to stop myself from going look at. I think it's a new six something. I can't remember the, the name of it, but I saw it going up the hill on uh, on Sunday on Sky, and it looked very nice. So yeah. I think, uh, in fact, he set the fastest time. They're in incredibly the fast because, as Gary will, you know, will, will attest, you know, the electric cars are so fast. I mean, just. Yeah insanely quick really it's a i think the big challenge now is getting the, is getting the power down down the tarmac they're, they're just so so fast really good yeah. uh, although yeah. there was one other thing which uh, uh might be a bit more uh within reach which was um uh, i also had a had, had a go on a uh, a mind controlled scale electric <laughs> now <laughs> this is proper well, no, this is proper tinkering stuff because um uh, i spoke to the guy that that, 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 that designed it and um it uses an emotive insight headset, and then they're only about, I think, about 300, 300 pounds. So, not cheap, but not massively expensive. And and, and that can basically do a, a non-medical grade uh, EG of your of, of of your brain. So it'll pick up brain function. And so, yeah, he he used some pretty standard APIs, bit of C sharp code, and got it to the point where if you you put it on, you train it in the in the, you think the thought you want to think to make cars go, and you think the thought you want to think to make cars stop. And then after you've done that training, and it knows that if your brain's doing this, it means you want the car to go. And you then get switched to over 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 to over to the cars. And it's really quite eerie. You just sit there looking at the track, and the, you're and I'm obviously I'm used to scale electric and, and having a hands and, and, and having a handset, but instead one just thinks about the car, and then away it goes. And then you stop thinking about it, and it stops. Really, really quite a, a fun thing. I thought, what are all the things you could do? Because it's you know, if you get that, if, if you if you have these signals come coming in from you from your brain, and I know there's been new 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 aware things with sort of cat ears and things and headsets. But this is seems to be the next step on from from from, from yeah. that. I thought, and you can access those feeds, those streams from the brain via just an, an API. Obviously, it's not going to it's not reading your mind or anything, but it does open the other door. Of, what other things could you control if you if you train it? If your brain is doing this, then it means you want to do that. I yeah, found that's fantastic. Yeah, you know, and of course, uh, and, and of course, at three hundred, about I think about two hundred ninety nine dollars is it's actually an accessible bit of te technology, and it's very consumer too. So it's not a, a shower cap with, with with wires all over it. It's quite a sleek plastic headset that goes on, and then yeah, and, and the backpack actually lasts lasts for hours. And uh, I didn't think yeah. I could I could imagine using this uh, yeah for other for other purposes in the house you know turning lights and things on or off just just by thinking about it it'd be great. So you could set it up with a Raspberry Pi and get it to turn on your Retro Pi and load up your ZX Spectrum <laughs> just with the power of thought. That would be good, but unfortunately uh, he, he did say that the one his initial prototypes did did use a Raspberry Pi, believe it or not. Uh, the the APIs themselves, Windows 10, sadly. So well, yeah. that's so you could get it to boot your Windows 11 Pi up instead. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, your Windows 10, just write a file so you somewhere your Pi is polling, or, or call the Pi via SSH <laughs> and have the Pi do. Yes, it'd be fine. What could go wrong? So you could do check for updates in Windows t uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 when you're on the Windows Insider. It would just your mind. Yes, indeed. Or alternatively, maybe. Uh, they, they could, could be someone doing some kind of feedback back to say, no, don't install it. You've not got the right hardware. <laughs> 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 a little little microelectric shock every time you try to install it. Was, was, this point there, device. The point was one way only. You thought it, 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 you didn't give yeah. a shock back. So emphasize I, that. 
I want the whole feedback loop. Every time you think you want to install Windows 11 on your unsupported device, you get a shock from Microsoft. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can just imagine <laughs> someone sat there with a big red bug. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Nixon's trying to get it to go on his Surface Pro 4. <laughs> <laughs> you will buy a new Surface. You will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Microsoft's upgrade strategy there in action. Yeah, so but, but, it, but it, it also is. I mean, I think the um, the, the festival's now, now now finished, but I'd, I'd recommend you know um, the, the future lab certainly was 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 well worth a, a visit. Just 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 just, 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 just yeah, you had the people behind these um, you can see exhibits, and there was also um, the Boston Dynamics dog thing was there as well, and you had the guys from Gravity with their jetpack. And they're all very happy to talk and chat chat about these, you know, yeah. sometimes you think this is quite far out. And then you see a person having a play with a jetpack outside and you think, actually, not that far out after all. No, that jetpack, when I was at Silverstone a couple of years ago, there was a guy going up and down the main straight and flipping around in it on a, with a jetpack well above the grandstands. And thought, that is the future. That's the future. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it now. <laughs> well, I think they've done a, a more consumer friendly version uh, because... What they were doing uh, at Goodwood was they had a, a structure with the tether and they were letting, I think, members of the public have a go with a more consumerized version. So one that was less light, light to set fire to, to, to your legs. Um, <laughs> and, and that looked great, really. I mean, I, I didn't have a go uh, because I didn't want the embarrassment saying, yes, you're probably a bit too on the heavy side to go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to, or, or, or to say, say, Bob, we need some bigger engines. <laughs> get, get the booster pack, Bob. <laughs> yeah, you want to avoid that. Yeah, I, I understand exactly. those well, but Yeah. But in all seriousness, again, you know, you know what? It's actually similar going back to a callback right at the start of the show, and that is that when you meet these these enthusiasts who design these things or build these things, you know, they they are so excited to tell you about you know what they've done. It's it's mm. just great. You know, really is great. So yeah, the same way we met the volunteers in the National Museum of Computing. Yeah. Um, you know, chat to Jason at the Centre for Computing History. Um, you, know, you meet someone who's, who's passionate about, about something, it's just a wonderfully engaging conversation. It is, yeah, and it's something I've kind of missed as well. You know, when we, as much as uh, we've kept in touch, everybody's kept electronically, digitally, you wouldn't be introduced to these people. So you go to one of these museums or an event and you meet someone who you wouldn't normally talk to and like the guy, you know, the churning machine or whatever, you know, it's just fascinating to talk to them and you just, it's just something you wouldn't normally do. So yeah, that's where it's nice to get out and about again. Yeah, definitely. When you can, when you're, when you're, <laughs> well, when you can anyway. Uh, um, fantastic. Well, I think that's just about everything we've got time for this week. So where can we catch up with all your stuff? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Richard underscore speed. Probably going to be quite Lego heavy for, for a while now. Excellent. And you can find me at Arkes Dixon on Twitter and uh, probably Raspberry Pi. We don't let it <laughs> After a lot of videos last week, I, I, I think I edited, I don't know, I had about 50 hours worth of video that got down to about 10 minutes or so. But yeah, yeah great job. Thank you. Great job. Great job. <laughs> Lots, lots of video and I've still got a lot of pictures so I think I'll do a photo gallery because I have some fantastic stuff as well anyway thanks very much for, for listening on this week so we we'll, should be back uh, I'm just debating on what is my birthday next week so I'm just deciding what so we should probably hear if not we'll be back the week after so I'll see you then great sir cheers